Hello, this is Ali Pordelli from cookie.com. In this video, I'm showing you how you can use the animated object widget. I will go through the different options that we have in the widget option panel in order to show you how you can combine them and how you can use them separately one by one. The animated object widget is an advanced Muse widget that you can use to create any type of animation in Muse. We also have some interesting options here like remote triggering and you can also combine the triggering options and have the customized animation. Uh, besides, you have so many preset transitions. So let's uh, go to Muse, drag and drop a copy of the widget to the page. This is a very long page. I just made it this long in order to show you what happens to the object when it enters the page from top and the bottom. So let's place the object at the center. When I open the option panel, at the very top, I have three methods in order to apply the animation to an object. The first one is the widget itself. So if I put it on the widget itself and I preview the page, I can scroll down to the object and you can see this little animation that we have here. And it happens when it enters the page from top and when it enters the page from bottom, which can be changed here under the triggering section. If I turn the second one off, it doesn't happen when the when the object enters the page from the bottom. So if I preview the page, if I scroll down to the object, you can see nothing because the animation doesn't happen. But if I scroll up and the object enters the page, the animation happens. The object stays hidden because we have this option here checked fade in at the beginning. If I uncheck this option and I preview, you can see the object at the beginning. And when it enters from top, the animation happens, but from bottom, nothing happens because I turned this off. Now let's go to the second applying method object with a certain graphic style. Now I can get to write a graphic style name here in this box. After I select this option, the second method, this box will be activated. And let's say style sample, for example, and create an object, give it a fill color. Let's remove the graphic styles that I already have and the graphic style panel. So I can select the object, go to graphic style panel, create a new style. As the object is selected, click on the style, double click on it, paste the style name. I copied the style name from the widget. And now when I preview the page, the animation will be applied to that object. The third option that we have here is using tooltips to assign animation. If I select that one, let me remove this object and make a new one. Now I can go to the hyperlink panel at the top and write down the transitions that I want to be applied to this object. For example, I want it to come from up, left, and I want it to shrink. Now when I preview the page, If I come to the object, this is what happens. Let's put it on fade in at the beginning. So I don't see the object before the animation happens and it fades into the page. This method is good if you want to apply the transitions really quick to, uh, to a few objects and you don't want to go through customized transitions for each object. So for example, if I have a different object here, another one here I can select each one and type a movement for example for this one I can say right and you can also combine them as we did for the first one and for the third one I can say rotate and when I preview the page let's turn this option on as well so when the object enters the page from bottom the animation happens too so when I scroll up 
you can see that each one of these objects has a different transition on it. The, the other thing that we have in this widget is remote triggering, which doesn't work if you want to use the tooltips. You need to use graphic style or the widget itself. The graphic style method is the most convenient method that you can use in order to apply the animation to an object. But the third one is good when you want to do it really quick for different objects. And the first one widget itself is just if you choose to use the widget as a container. So I put it on the graphic style. I remove all these three objects. I make an object, place it at the center of the page, apply the graphic style that we already have. And now we can have a trigger. So if I select remote triggering and I preview the page, nothing happens to this object because it doesn't have the trigger yet. Now let's make a trigger for this object and give it a style name on the graphic style panel, create a new style as the object is selected, double click on the style and trigger. This is just an example. You can pick any name that you want for your trigger and your object as well. So I can go back to the widget and paste the name here. Now this object works as a trigger for this object. So in the widget option panel, we have one option. We have one graphic style at the top, which is this object. So the animation will be applied to this object and we have another graphic style name, which is for the trigger, which is here. So let's put it on click only and turn these two off. And when I preview the page, this is a trigger. When I click on it, the animation happens. You can also have the animation fades out after a certain amount of time, for example, two seconds. So when I click on this trigger, the animation happens and after two seconds, it fades out. Now let's do something more interesting. Let's place this object at the very top right and pin it at the top right side of the page and turn these two on and turn off the click. And this one now works as the trigger. So when I preview the page and let's say, yeah, everything. And let's deselect the fade out option. So when I preview, uh, when I preview the page, when I scroll down to the object, the animation happens. And when it goes off the page, it fades out. You can also use the customized animation. And if you turn on the customized animation, the preset transitions will be turned off automatically. But you get to create your own animation which will be more customized, uh, of course. So for the horizontal movement, I, I can enter 200, which means the object comes to the page from 200 pixels on the right side. And I can have scale 1.5 times and rotation 25 degrees. And now when I preview the page, when the trigger goes off, the animation um, disappears. And you can see the revert and it, the revert transition. When it comes to the page, you can see the animation. When the trigger goes off the page, you can see the revert transition. You can turn off the revert transition if you don't want it to happen and the object just disappears. You can also reverse the movement and instead of the object coming to the page from 200 pixels from right and from this rotation it starts from the default original position that we have here on the um on the design uh on the design view and when the trigger happens it disappears which i don't want it to so let's uncheck this option and preview again so when it goes off it goes back to the original position and if i turn this off i can see it better and if you uncheck this again 
you will have a reversed transition. So that was all about this widget and I hope you find this widget useful for your project. If you have any questions about this widget, you can go to the preview uh, the, the preview site. You can click on the help documentation and we have everything documented here. And if you couldn't find your answer, you can go to cookie.com and submit a support ticket and we will answer you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.